So, remember I told you I was gonna tell you about this painting again? So we are, we are making the transition to the next place in our story. At Cosmic Cowgirls, we work a lot with the thought of legend, of the legend that we want to create for our lives. That's what we do in the legend course, and some of the other ones is to, especially in those places where you feel like you're in the deepest valleys, like, what do you want to cause and create in the future? What would it look like? I spent a fair amount of time when I was down in my personal prison uh, exploring what would it look like, and the only thing that could come to mind was that because I had such a powerful and rich relationship with my former partner that I couldn't imagine I could ever have that again. And I remember writing that poem, The 1,000 Broken Vows, and someone writing to me and saying, well, you've had that once. Most of us have never had that at all. And I think of how many people are searching for their soulmates and how rare it is to find someone who feels like your person, you know, that really sees you, that you see. So I thought the chance, my belief was the chance of finding my person again, getting lucky twice in this life, of, of getting to be with my person again, uh, just did not feel real to me. And a lot of my girlfriends and were like, you can, you can, but that's what they always say. They're so positive and affirmative and joyful, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I really didn't believe that. But I was, as a creative being, able to explore what the legend would be. So the legend would be that I would um, that I would find love again and that it would be just as powerful or more than the one that I had before. Again, I didn't have a belief in it. I didn't have any faith. I really didn't. I wasn't begging God or the universe. I was like, you know what? But I did know that that's what the story would look like, but I couldn't imagine that was possible. So if you're in a similar place where it just doesn't even seem possible. You don't even believe on it. Um, I'm here to be a witness that sometimes miracles do happen. And so in this painting over here, Mr. Cameraman, could we look at this painting? I could bring it over. So this painting was one of the paintings I did, just like I'm guiding you into doing it now. I got really into it, sometimes drink a bottle of wine myself, splatter paint, just got crazy, stayed up all night and just poured my heart into it. So at a certain point in the journey, I had the pleasure of going on a date with Mr. Jonathan Lewis and I did bring him home to my house on that very first date, although I don't recommend that for any of you, unless you feel it absolutely in your soul. And it happened that this painting was laying on the table and we were drinking a bottle of wine, listening to music, dancing, there was some red thread involved and at a certain point Jonathan dumped over his glass of red wine onto the painting. In truly unflappable Shiloh form, I said, what did I say Jonathan? Cool, let's glaze it in. Cool, let's glaze it in and he was delighted by this. Can you come up here for a minute, Baba? Sure. <laughs> That's our name for each other, Baba. <laughs> we don't know where that came from, but um, so he was so into that reality, and so he bent down over Hi, the everyone. painting. <laughs> he bent down over the painting. Make sure you're in here. Come on. I'm in here. He bent down over the painting and blew the wine into the painting, and I got the paintbrush out, and we varnished it and included it. So this painting has the DNA from our first date. It does. I was horrified. I mean, can you imagine here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in her home and I'm surrounded by art and beauty and this, this magnificent little cottage on the side of the hill in West Marin and I'm just like, this is so beautiful and amazing and <laughs> I don't know what's going on but this is just a really wonderful, amazing uh, date and, and person. and and. I'm animated and I talk with my hands and I get excited and wow, there went the wine. <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking to myself, well, that's my new, probably like 40 paychecks or something because I'm like, oh, I guess I bought that one. <laughs> but it's like, it, and she was just like, that's fantastic because all that emotion and all that energy just went straight right in, in. Straight in. And so when she took that attitude, I said, well, let's, let's feather it out. So it's kind of like taking a drop of paint, and you can even try this at home, a, a drop of paint, 
and like an empty vaporizer, empty perfume vaporizer or something, and just kind of, or just get down and blow on it, just, and it just fans, and it just spreads and goes all random directions, and <laughs> that's what happened right there, all yes. over here. So that that Seals. is a very that Seals is a very nice bottle of wine that uh, uh, ended up in the painting. That he brought in his backpack. Now it's amazing. Yeah, it was in my, it was um, in my backpack. And so we. The amazing thing is that we both weren't ready for the relationship. We both come out of really long-term marriages with people who were our best friends. That's true. And we were both still in um, our various forms of devastation, which is pretty messy. When, you're, when your heart is broken, <laughs> you're pretty messy. And yeah. we were both being super, super creative. But as fate and magic would have it, we did not have another date for one year. But this painting lived on in my Almost home. Almost exactly a year. Exactly, and was like 10 days difference. And what, what called us back together, I painted this painting, a different painting, called This is the Song of the Beloved. I hadn't talked to him for like nine months. Correct. I painted the painting. Um, I was teaching at ITP, Sophia University. I painted the painting, and I just randomly texted it to him. I don't even think I said no. anything. No. So the painting actually spoke to me of This is my Beloved, and I sent it to him, and the communication started again. I was in my studio and my phone buzzed on the table and I was kind of like, just do it. I can't remember what I was doing at the time. I was drawing or something and and I I kind of wandered over and I looked at it and I went, hey, like, that's not a text you get every day, right? <laughs> so I was like, ah, okay. So hmm. that started it again. And on our first date, one of the things he said to me was, um, that I altered his path. And so that, within mm -hmm. a couple of minutes of responding to that text of that photo, that painting, he said, remember how I said that you altered my path and here's how. And he told me that he had published a couple of books of his photography that were inspired and catalyzed by seeing the form that I had created. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually very true. You know, we talk a lot and she speaks a lot to you and to me about, you know, the the, that magic moment when word or action or thought or inquiry actually catalyzes and becomes form. It's like, gee, I think I'll write a book. Oh wait, here it is. <laughs> and so getting it out of here and onto there is always extraordinarily difficult, as you all know. And it's really astonishing because that's exactly what I told her. I said, well, since I saw you last, um, I pub published a photographic essay book of San Francisco and also I published a book of short stories at, yeah. that point, at that point. And so I sent her a copy and then she bought a copy. So we had two copies. <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was fantastic because she could see the physical manifestation of the inquiry that she had set in, in me, mm -hmm. even over all that time. So and we remember altering these. my path is the, um, oh, boy did that ever happen. <laughs> Absolutely. And through a process connected to Color of Woman called the Talisman, mm -hmm. combined with the need to go to the United Nations, I got it in my spirit. Like, from a creative perspective, my muse was like, that's the man to take you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, you know, we still had barely talked on the phone almost a year now. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got this gig and I need you to film and I need these slideshows and I need someone to run technology and I need a male escort and da 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 da. Like, I have work. And I need you, and I can't pay you right now, but you could just, you know, I'll pay for your food and travel. Can you just come? And he uh, <laughs> got on a train and uh, came from Texas. And what's, yeah. what's one of the parts of the story we love to tell is that he had said in a follow-up communication after our first date that if he ever came back to my house again, he would never leave. And so that second date, one year later, he yeah, showed up with suitcases. Yeah, that's what I said. I actually said, <laughs> be careful if you ever invite me back because if I come back, I won't be leaving again. And he didn't. And, and he, so I came with suitcases and she had a guest bedroom all set up. And thank you, Mary McDonald, out there in, in, in Canada for uh, clearing about this much of a, <laughs> one closet in the house for me. And uh, uh, so I got a little space in the, in the spare bedroom. And a couple of short months later, uh, we were on our way to New York City for the first time, and Here we I never are. left. <laughs> so, 
So. And he asked me to marry him three days later. That's um, true. We were in the middle of a retreat. I was like, welcome to my life. And actually I have a retreat right now with Christina Rilo and Amy Ehlers. This is super serious. You can come if you want. And That's true. I was like, welcome to my world. It's really fast. Get in the car. We pack the paints. We got to go. That's true. And so, um, but during that time, he recognized me and asked wow. me to marry him. And I said, yeah. I saw you very clearly. And, you know, it's funny because one of the things that I'm going to call it maturity brings, uh, maybe experience, is, is that, that there are certain things that you know, there are certain things you don't know, there are certain things you don't know that you do know. So I actually knew it and felt it the whole time. Mm -hmm. I had no language for it. I had no capacity to discover it mm -hmm. until... I was physically at the moment where I was catalyzed and it became obvious to me. Mm -hmm. And so once I get there, <clears throat> I don't know if you know anything about me at all, per se, I was a soldier when I was a kid, saw lots of very serious um, uh, situations, uh, life and death. Combat. More, yeah, um, you know, hour by hour kind of situation stuff. And so, um, during that seven years of, of combat um, experience, it was, um, you can't, you, you rely on your training to survive, you rely on your instinct to survive, but you rely mostly on your training to survive. And what you do is you build this collection of experiences that allows you to draw from. Now, Shiloh will tell you that the human psyche tends to go to the negative. Like, oh, well, um, uh, the things I can recall most are the bad things that happened. And it's hard to remember the celebrations and the victories and all those little things because, I don't know, I think sometimes humans are wired that way. <clears throat> and so in relationships, for me, for you perhaps as well, it was the same way. I was like, well, every, every molecule in my body is like, run away. Like, go that way. <laughs> Get out of here. And um, yet, my training and my intellect and my instinct all knew exactly that you were the right person to be my person. And so my heart and my mind worked together in that case to overcome what was in, an instinctual response. And so it wasn't, it, 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 was a, it was a whole body yes, and so I had to act on it. Mm -hmm. And so I did. It, um, it seemed to work out okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna work out just fine. <laughs> I'm a little sweaty. Salty. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, everyone, about a month, one month, 30 days out from our wedding. And That's true. As a part of this heart workshop, we wanted to, to hear a little bit more about our story. And Yeah. Thank we, you so much. This year has uh, been unbelievable. And what we wanted to tell you is that we really hadn't completed our healing when we got back together. More mm -hmm. than when our first date, but we didn't have our stuff in a pile yet. And so those of you who think Not you have to have your stuff, you have your stuff in a pile before you can get to the place where your legend is taking you, we worked together and nurtured each other until we both looked at each other maybe six months in and we're like, you know what? We healed each other. Yeah, um, in one of Shiloh's recent classes uh, with Lisa, Lisa Rankin, um, you can find on the website, and I strongly recommend, it talks about healing, and Shiloh painted out a painting, and she, she was standing pretty much right here, and she just kind of got this kind of <laughs> quizzical look on her face, and she went, she turned around, and she wrote right on the painting, I am healed. And it was at, at that moment, in her conscious decision-making about that process and about that moment, that's that's when I that's when I just kind of witnessed her just watch it just drop in. She was like, "I'm done now." So you get to a certain place where you're not wounded in the same way that you were. You don't feel the broken openness. You don't feel the shatteredness. And I feel like it's really important to um, to claim that when it happens. And that's what we claimed to each other that we had gotten to that place where we felt actually healed. And we said things like, "Wow." I don't feel broken anymore. I don't feel broken anymore. And um, coming out of a run of trauma that lasted for, I would say, probably three decades, um, and having, having, being able to participate in a process and in a inquiry that would allow me to sort of, sort of like, 
Uh, if somebody has a, a hole in their jeans, you know, when you're a kid, you stick it in there and try to rip their pants. At least that's what we did in West Virginia. Don't tell anybody. And so the <clears throat> the idea, though, is is that the inquiry that she set within me allowed me to identify those places where those holes existed and what kind of story I was running around them. And then I was able to sort of take that story and encapsulate it and begin to manipulate it. And by understanding it and by examining it and by taking it out of my head and sort of holding it out here, what you do is you take it out of your head and you hold it in its energy and its space and its container and its form on this canvas. Once you get it out there, you can begin to manipulate it. Now, I have start, or what, or I've started- what a woman would say, to shed light on it. I see, well, I, I started the painting and then I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I, I express my art in different ways. Uh, uh, however, it's the same catalytic movement and transfer of thought into form, which can be, manipulate, can be manipulated even slightly, and then considered, which allows me to realize that the container that it came out of can be as easily manipulated, or, or it can be easily changed as well. Transformed, yeah. Transformed. Yeah. And only I have the power to do that, and only you have the power to do what it is that you're doing. If you're looking outside for this kind of thing, then you're not going to find it. You can only find it inside. So we wanted to share that story with you since yeah. we're about to go off on our adventure and this is the last stream before yeah. the wedding adventure and share that story with you since so many of you have traveled my story yeah, with the me. Yeah, the first time I ever came here to Cosmic Cowgirls in the, in the studio, Mary, I told Mary McDonald after a wonderful conversation, I said, um, well, I, I hope you don't mind, but I'm just going to take Chief Laughing Cloud here and throw over my saddle and ride off into the west. Is that okay with you? And uh, Mary was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> a little early in the a little early in the story back then, but uh, I'm really doing it this time. I'm actually um, we're riding off. I'm riding off into the sunset and uh, with Chief Laughing Cloud. And um, when we're ready, we'll be back. <laughs> so thanks for being a part of our story and following our yeah. our path. All of you have been part of the and part of the evolution. And so this was such a part an incredible of the, way. Yeah. This is a part of the healing story that um, I was bringing today, both the suffering part, the transition part, and the resolution part. So we just invite you to take a look at the story that you have and where does it want to go next? I'm going to go back to work. <laughs> Bye.